Katanas. Pretty sweet, right? <laughs> sorry, 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 I'm so sorry. Is it okay if I stop it already? <laughs> Musha, Raiden Damascus Blade Katana. Ah, uh, and the blade is made from Damascus steel. They're much more blurry in a way, naturally blurry on these real katana. And I know a lot of Japanese, you know, katana trainees, you know, Yaido instructors would be very angry that I'm promoting katana outside of Japan, but... And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. So because I make a lot of videos related to katana, talking about yaido and such and the martial arts, I receive a lot of questions to the comments and DMs about katana. And whenever I have conversations about the Japanese swords with someone outside of Japan, I have gradually realized that the definition, you know, the concept of katana is very different within and outside of Japan. So in order for me to learn more about how katana are seen from outside of Japan, I found a very very interesting video. It's the $200 versus $2,000 katana, how to spot a fake. This video has almost gotten 7 million views, so I would love to learn from watching this video myself. I'm especially interested because in Japan, um, how to spot a fake katana, you know, is very easy. If the katana doesn't have a official certificate, it's not a real katana and it's illegal to hold on to it. But I guess outside of Japan, because there's different qualities for different katana probably, there's different things that you have to look out for, right? So I'm really um, looking forward to learning more about that. Then without further ado, let's get started. Katanas. Pretty sweet, right? Sorry, 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 I'm so sorry. Is it okay if I stop it already? <laughs> The video just started, there was only like three seconds, but uh, there was one thing that really concerned me. I mean, the katana that he has is his katana, so it's really up to him to how to handle the katana. But um, when you, for example, pull these swords out, um, you shouldn't slam the katana into the scabbards, though. That could lead the scabbards to crack and break, and it could damage the metal fittings on this side, too. So you should never slam your katana into your scabbard. Even people who train martial arts in Japan do often do that in videos and such, but I personally wouldn't recommend it if you want your katana to last longer in good shape. Um, but have you ever wondered if that sweet-ass katana you bought at the mall was beautiful. perhaps a little too friggin' sweet to be true? Perhaps okay. the man with the ponytail who sold it to you told you it was battle-ready and made battle of ready, glorious yeah. Nippon steel. Well, by the end of this yeah, video, you'll be able to tell the quality of a blade before even pulling it out of the sheath. And if that doesn't get you laid, I don't okay. know what will. Nowadays, you can buy katanas anywhere. You can get them on Amazon, pawn shops, that one weird that store in the mall just... that sells dragon statues. So it's just really interesting for me already here because in the US, that you're able to buy katana in so many places. I think it was just same talk about a shopping mart even. In Japan, that's unbelievable. The places where you can buy these katana are the katana shops only. Like for example, the Tozando shop that I often recommend. So there are a few katana shops in every city, but they're absolutely not that common for Japanese people. It's not like in every block or in every shopping market or anything. And you absolutely cannot buy a real katana on Amazon. One thing I can say though, is that you could find a real katana on Yafu auctions, like on auction sites on the, on the internet. Some people get the really, really cheap katana sometimes on auctions, but on regular EC sites, you usually would not be able to find a real sharp uh, blade katana. For comparison, I have two katanas here. Okay. One is an That's authentic Paul Chen Kami katana, priced at Paul around $2,000. This thing has it all. A hand-forged, folded K120C powdered steel blade that's differentially hardened uh -huh. using traditional methods. You can clearly see the tight grain pattern created by the folded steel. This sword is furnished with the highest quality fittings that Paul Chen offers, including okay. real gold inlays and beautifully handcrafted details. This sword mm, truly is a work of art. And today, we're gonna compare it to this $200 sword I bought on Amazon $200? So first of all, the $200 was really surprising for me too, but $2,000 was really surprising for me too. In Japan, maybe you might be able to find a $2,000 katana at a katana shop, but it'll probably be like one of the cheapest, cheapest ones ever. Again, if you're looking at an auction site and someone just randomly gives a price to it, maybe you'll be lucky enough to find it, but you would usually not be able to find it. So for example, let's say I have two real katana here. The main sword that I use is on top, this brown one over here with the purple sagyo. 
This one was about 6,600 US dollars when I bought it. And this is actually one of the cheaper ones. When I went to my dojo to buy these katana, the most expensive one was actually more expensive than $10,000. So $2,000 and of course $200 for a sharp blade is unbelievable. It's uh, something that you would absolutely not be able to find that easily in Japan. For starters, oh, you gotta consider four. how much you're spending and where you're getting Resident your sword Evil from. Four. If you're buying a $20 mm -hmm. katana off eBay from a guy who calls all his swords eBay. battle ready, full tank, Damascus steel, then he probably looks like this and you're probably eBay gonna have too. a bad time. And the nice thing about these practice katanas... Oh, what? Oh, that hurt. The only website what I know happened? that sells real swords and calls them battle ready is Cult of Athena. But that's because that website Cult was made in the year 2000 Athena. and it hasn't been updated since. That's a contrast? Throw it. Now the absolute minimum you're gonna need to spend if you wanna buy a real katana is around two to $300. Now that might seem like a lot, wow. but the way I see it, That's these swords lot. are like works of art. It's like buying a really expensive painting. Only difference that, yeah, is, that is true. this piece of art can cut a man clean in two. So first of all, I tried to look up the website he was talking about. Is this the right one? Cult of Athena? Maybe? It looks very different from the one that he was showing on his screen actually, but here, you can see they, they do have some katana here. Uh, $55 to $72, 68, $378. Oh, this one's a little bit more expensive. 960 to $1,118, okay. Because in Japan, you know, it's illegal to buy such blades. In Japan, for these blades to be qualified as a katana, there are a lot of strict circumstances, right? Like I explained in my previous videos. So I will never be able to buy these and have them shipped over to Japan. First of all, I can't do it. And if I secretly did it, for example, I would be immediately be arrested and I'll be caught in jail. So I've never had these opportunities to look at these websites before. Let me just take a look at one of these then. Musha, Raiden Damascus Blade Katana. Oh, uh, and the blade is made from Damascus steel. See, that's another thing. In Japan, the steel must be tamahagane for it to be regarded as a katana, so it can't be made out of any other kind of steel. Oh, uh, so the surface looks completely different. Oh, that's so interesting. And I think this one is probably one of their most expensive ones. Taitsuki Tombo Samai Limited Edition Laminated Katana. Laminated? What does that mean? Oh, uh, it does look really, really beautiful though. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, nice dragonfly there. But $3,000 is so cheap though. And he said that the absolute minimum to buy a real katana is $200 to $300. In Japan, that would be the price to get these Yaito, which are the zinc alloy katana, the practicing katana that we Yaito trainees would use. Even the Yaito that I have, even the zinc alloy cannot cut katana. For example, this one is the one that I've been using since the first day I started training Yaito. This one cost me more than $600. And the one I use mainly right now is this bottom one right here, this purple one. This one, for example, cost me more than 1,000 US dollars. I cannot believe that the sharp blades can be, you know, bought in such a cheap price. If you want a sharp real katana in Japan, I would say that the cheapest price would be like maybe $3,000. And if you do actually buy this $3,000 real katana in Japan, the quality, I would definitely not guarantee you. I would say you should at least aim for $5,000 range of katana. That's exactly the reason why both of the katana that I have, the real katana that I have here, are more expensive than $6,000. Most of the time, you can tell the quality mm -hmm. of a blade just by its furnishings. No one's gonna dress up a crappy okay. blade with nice fittings. One of the easiest ways well, to tell yeah. if a katana is fake is by the thickness of the segeo. Now this is the cord oh, wrapping we that is around the scabbard. And it's a guarantee mm -hmm. that if they skimped out on this, they definitely skimped out on the blade. The segeo oh, should be a nice okay. thick silk cord wrap. If it looks like a cheap polyester, mm -hmm. shiny oh, that shoeless, is very different. that's super thin like this, shoeless, then it's definitely yeah, it fake. Like this rule also applies to the handle wrap. So yeah, the Sageo, for example, this one, the very first Iaito that I bought, this is a cheaper Sageo, but this is probably the basic one that most Iaito would have. These are actually made out of cotton. Yeah, they're a little bit harder and a little bit more difficult to handle in your training, I would say. On the other hand, on my more expensive Iaito, this Sageo is actually made from silk. Yeah, so it's much softer, it's much more flexible, a lot easier to handle when you train in Iaito. 
So I would say the two main materials in Japan for the sake will be cotton and silk. I'm pretty sure there are a lot more, but mainly I think these two are the materials for a sake. There's a quick test you can do handle by wrapping. taking your thumb and attempting to move the handle oh, wrap that's up and down on the handle. If it moves too much on the handle, that means the core wrap is both cheap well, and the person who did it didn't do a very good cheap. job. Let's then, for example, take a look at the cheapest Yaito that I have here. This Yaito is, I think it was around $300. Yeah, obviously the uh, string would not move at all. Because <laughs> these are for training, It'd be katana, right? In Yaito, if these strings would move around, you will not be able to use to swing it and do proper training. Even the cheapest one that I have will absolutely not move at all, no. And then this is the wrapping. It's actually made out of leather. This is my real katana, and obviously for this too, no. <laughs> it's it's impossible to move, move it at all, no. It's just completely hard, and it will not move, not even a millimeter, no. It's exactly the same as the Yaito, but obviously on the real katana too, it won't move at all, no. The ray skin. Now this ray is skin. one of the most oh, the difficult inside. things to fake on a katana, because ray skin mm. tends to be pretty expensive. Real sure, katanas sure, sure. use real dried stingray skin on mm -hmm. the inside of the handles to give the cord wrapping something to grip onto. Exactly. While fake katanas use molded cheap plastic uh, yeah, imitation yeah, ray skin. That's not real. An easy way to spot the difference is real ray skin tends to have deviations in both the size and patterning of oh, the bumps. Okay. And also you should that be able to see a clear really separation in between the bumps on real ray skin as opposed to the molded plastic. Uh, Let's compare these two hand guards. The Kami Katanas has intricate, oh, painstakingly hand-carved hand details, gold inlays, and is cast out of thick, high-quality iron. Now onto the Amazon sword. The uh, handguard looks dollars. cheap and brittle. Is it monkeys the on gold it? is painted on poorly. Oh. I wouldn't trust this handguard to protect my hand from even a judo chop. And you got your name, G-chop. Let alone a sword strike. But what he said is completely correct. The handguards actually can be a piece of art alone. I have seen in katana shops where the just the handguard could be a few thousand dollars. So looking at the, the quality of the handguard is definitely is a point that you look out for for the quality of the katana itself, absolutely. But for the handguards though, unlike the blade itself, I believe the material for the handguards could be all sorts of types of steels and iron actually. This one that I have on my Yaito, maybe this is aluminum? could be aluminum, and all of the other katana that I have here have different types of steel. So I think that would depend, even in Japan, um, depending on the quality of the katana, I think the material will differ. Oh, finally moving on to the blade. Cool. First, I'm gonna take a look at the Amazon sword. Amazon sword, here we go. Uh, what? Is that plastic on it? Huh, okay, well, um, I guess it's to protect the Scabber Why would from, you have plastic over the blade? From the oil? I don't know. Or maybe it protect the blade from the inside of the poorly made scabbard? Hmm. Okay. I've seen a couple of times where the overseas websites or shops have these plastic over the blades when you first buy them and you take them off, you know, once it comes to your house. But in Japan, at least for me, I have never seen those plastic films over the blades. Of course, not for the real katana, but not even for the Yaito either. So I'm not too sure why they have it. Is it just to prevent, you know, any scratches on the blades and such? If you have the sheath on, the scabbard on, there shouldn't be any scratches because if there is scratches just by putting it into the scabbard, then the scabbard has a problem, right? Oh, here comes the real one. Oh, they're both sharp. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice on a katana is the temper line or the hamon. Mm, the hamon, It is right? the wavy pattern on the blade. Traditionally, the temper mm. line is created by applying a special type of wet clay onto exactly, the edge exactly. of the blade before the final firing process. Yes. I I'm not gonna go too into detail, so far, but yeah. generally when you forge a sword, the higher the temperature, the more flexible the blade, while the lower okay. the temperature, the harder and more durable it is. Traditional okay, okay. katanas do both in a process called yep, differential exactly. hardening. The this allows the spine different. to remain flexible, making the steel more resistant to breaking while at the same time retaining a super hard durable edge. The yes, Kami Katana absolutely. has a traditional Paul Chen style wave motif going about the Hamon, and you can okay. tell that it is actually a truly differentially hardened blade. 
I mean, just look at this. This shit is beautiful. And because it's yeah, all it done by hurt. hand, it means that no two swords are ever the same. Exactly. Now, when you compare it to the Amazon too. sword, this homon is clearly oh, fake. It's cheaply wow. acid etched onto the blade. Very different. You can tell because the edge is the same color as the rest of the blade. And the only discoloration yeah. is where they did the acid etching. This means yeah, the blade was not differentially kind of hardened, meaning the edge is probably quite weak and brittle. Now, I'm no metallurgist, but I feel like it's safe to say that this probably isn't even made of high carbon steel. I would never recommend using this for cutting. Sure, you could slice some water bottles in your backyard with it, but anything more than that, you risk the blade snapping and potentially really that injure would yourself. Be dangerous. Oh, that got me. Oh, yeah, that commercial. So, overall, again. I don't ever recommend buying one of these fake swords, even for display. I wouldn't purposes. recommend it either. Sure, they might look cool and they're cheap, but if you consider that for less than $100 more, you can get a legitimate real katana, it just seems like such a waste of money. So then at the end, let's try to compare the Hamong on the Yaito and the real katana that I have then. So this is the Yaito that I have. So you can understand that although the steel is made from zinc alloy, and again, this is not the real Tamahagane, you can probably see that Tozando, my favorite katana shop's Yaito, have a pretty good quality Hamon, you know, it looks almost real to be honest. I'm sure if you haven't had so much experience of holding onto a real katana, I'm pretty sure you might actually misunderstand that this is the real one. And this is the real katana that I have. Please do understand that I am a Tamishigiri mat cutting trainee as well, so the there are some um, rust and some scratches on the surface of my blade, but still you can see that the Hamon on my blade for this katana is absolutely really really beautiful too. I really love it. But come to think of it, taking a closer look and comparing them immediately, you can see that the Yaito, the Zinc Alley Katana, of course has the artificial Hamon. They're much more blurry in a way, naturally blurry on these real Katana. You can see that the Hamon are completely different. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Wow, watching this video absolutely gave me a lot more knowledge about how katana are seen outside of Japan. Now, as I explained earlier, the cheapest katana that you can ever get in Japan are these Yaito. And as I showed you earlier, even these Yaito have a fair amount of good quality. I never knew that there could be those almost shoelace-like, you know, sageo and the tsukamaki, the handle wrapping, but the blade is sharp. It's, like, for me, it's like way too scary that someone can just click and buy that on Amazon. So because of this, probably whenever I recommend Tozando and the Japanese katana shops, I always get responses saying that, oh, this is so expensive, you know, this is, you know, ripping us off kind of thing. But I do want to say to you that of course the prices have a meaning. I mean, you wouldn't just uh, make a bad quality sword and sell it at a very expensive price, right? So I'm not here to say that the katanas made by other companies outside of Japan, for example, are bad. No, I'm not here to tell you that. Please, I want to make this very clear. I'm not here to criticize any companies or any groups here. But I do want to say, I do want to tell you guys that the swords, the katanas made by the Japanese companies, of course, have high quality as well. And the prices are worth something. And if you are planning on training in Yaido, for example, katana-related martial arts for a long period of time, I really, really recommend you please do buy the katanas from the martial art goods shops, such as Tozando or the other shops that you know of. It'd be much better, much safer for you because these are built for enduring such long-term training. But again, I'm not sitting in front of you to preach to you how wonderful Japanese katana are at all. That's exactly the reason why I work with Mini Katana. I actually have an affiliate link in the description box. If you want to, you can jump through my page. You can get their katana 15% off all of the products. And I know a lot of Japanese, you know, katana trainees, you know, Yaido instructors would be very angry that I'm promoting katana outside of Japan. But from my belief, I am just really, really happy and glad that there are more and more people interested in katana. And every kind of katana, it could be the Yaito, it could be these real swords uh, that I have, for example, for the Tamishigiri mat cutting, it could be a piece of art, it could be for cosplay, for example. Every katana has its purpose and price range for it, right? And when you're still young, you might not be able to afford it. If you get older, you might be able to afford a more expensive katana. You know, depending on where, where you are in life, you'll be able to buy different types of katanas. So I would say all katana, as long as it's safe for the person who's going to be holding onto it, I would say every katana can be allowed to be in this world. And with all of that said, I again really enjoyed watching this video and please do let me know your thoughts and ideas towards this video or the katanas in and out of Japan. I'll be waiting for your comments. 
And by the way, before I go, recently I started working at Interpreter at a summer experience in Kyoto. If you have a chance to come to Kyoto, it'd be great if you could come and see me. And also it'd be great if you could check out our Kofi page and Suzuki merchandise page, which are all in the description box or the pinned comment. So everyone, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you so much. I wish you the best. Bye-bye.